is Lisa Marion. I work at the Bosch Center for Artificial Intelligence here in Sunnyvale. So we have a lot of opportunities for AI at Bosch. Um, as my previous colleagues have mentioned, we cover a wide variety of different sectors from mobility, industrial, building, and consumer goods. Each of these individual sectors provide us different opportunities to incorporate AI either as a feature of a product that we sell or as part of the process of producing that product. And as Uma had mentioned before, that is a major goal for Bosch to by 2025 <laughs> have all our projects, products either possess um, some artificial intelligence as part of their features uh, that we provide to the consumers or as we produce them, we are using AI. So what we need to introduce AI into our products or our processes is what gets discussed mostly um, when people are talking about artificial intelligence tends to be focused on the algorithms more. Um, so it's basically how you actually train um, a system to be able to learn by itself, um, how a car can drive itself, for example. Uh, and we do work on that in-house as well. The Bosch Center for Artificial Intelligence has a um, pretty sizable research team that is currently working on state-of-the-art research topics. Um, but additionally, to actually get it from an idea, from a theoretical idea into a product, we need both compute resources, uh, which we, of course, have access to, and most importantly, we need data. Um, so one of the advantages that being such a large company gives us, especially a company that covers so many different sectors, is that we have access to a bunch of different um, types of data. Um, so BCAI overview, I guess. Um, our general mission is to help reach that goal, obviously, of introducing AI into the different areas. Um, I already covered our research team. We also have an enabling team, which are, you can kind of think of them as uh, AI evangelists. They go out to the different business units and kind of teach them about, you know, what machine learning is, how it can help in their products, um, what kind of data they need to be collecting if they want to be able to gain relevant insights from it. And then we have the services team, which is where I work. Uh, we focus more on applied AI. So what we do is we consult with various business units uh, within Bosch who have use cases or are interested in introducing machine learning into their products or processes, and we basically help them take that from an idea to a reality. Uh, we cover these four different areas. I'm going to briefly describe kind of each one. Uh, we have a bunch of different projects ongoing right now. Um, but for an example, in the manufacturing domain, something that we do is we work with uh, optical inspection, which is where we put a camera in the uh, production line at Bosch's many plants. And we basically collect images of the parts as they come through and try to perform or try to train a train a model to do automated part inspection. So basically being able to tell if a part is passing or failing by just looking at an image of it. Um, in the engineering space, uh, we, do, we do some work around um, gaining insights from data that is collected as we develop a new sensor, for example, for a new product, or if we are trying to add kind of a smart home type of functionality to an existing appliance that Bosch already makes. Uh, for supply chain management and controlling, uh, we have a financial forecasting platform that basically looks at all of Bosch's financial data and can make predictions about future sales. And then intelligence services, which I'm going to go into slightly more detail on, um, since that is more of what I have worked on recently. So um, AI for mobility is obviously a hot topic. We have um, two main groups at Bosch that are working on that. We have, um, for my friends that work in the autonomous driving space. Um, you may be familiar with the um, L3 to L5 kind of designations. So we have um, driver assistance functions, which are going to be your L3 and below. Those are things like automated braking when you detect a hazard on the road, or lane keeping, kind of those functionalities that already exist in your car. And we also have autonomous driving group, um, which is the car outside, which would be the car driving itself. Um, some collaborations that this group has done uh, with BCAI that I've been involved with have been uh, lane keeping. So if you see the top image, um, we basically take a semantic segmentation map of a, of a scene and basically use that um, to keep the car on the road. 
Um, we also do hazard detection. So if you look at these two images in the middle, the one on the left is a mostly clear windshield. The one on the right, the windshield has been obscured with some droplets of water. A human looking at these two images can clearly tell that they're the same scene. Um, we basically, our brains have a really good way of mentally deleting the information that you don't need. It's very difficult for a computer to do the same thing. That's one of the main challenges when we're training um, algorithms to be able to see, for example, for driving a car. So we've done some work around um, helping either make the model itself more robust to these kinds of disturbances, or basically just having some kind of a sense so that the car knows when one or more of the cameras has been, had its vision obscured. Um, and then the last topic, which I wanted to cover in slightly more detail, is the data privacy compliance topic. Uh, so I'm not sure how many of you are aware of the GDPR regulation. Yes, okay, a lot of nodding. Yeah, so that's a, a really important law that was passed by the EU, um, which basically, the, the general gist of it is that uh, any company that is collecting personally identifiable information from people without um, their consent basically needs to delete that data every six months or somehow you scrub the personally identifiable information. For our automotive topics, that mainly covers human faces and license plates. So what we did to help our business units and prevent them from throwing away their data every six months is we developed a tool using deep learning to be able to identify, locate the faces and license plates in the data that was generated by the proprietary Bosch sensors and blur those out of the image. So basically what we are doing is helping them generate training data that they can use long term and also store, uh, which will help them basically consistently validate their work over time. Um, so yeah, just AI for your AI. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of the overview of what uh, Bosch is doing in regards to AI. I've kind of mostly talked about how we spread AI internally, and now I'm going to bring the user back into the conversation and pass off to my colleagues uh, to talk about human-machine collaboration. Thank you.